So I hope I'm making this enjoyable, a no-brainer. I'm just going to revert this to the last save version in case I accidentally put a piece of something in there that I shouldn't have put in there. Okay, so as you make changes, save changes. So again, if you go up here, look at all this code it wrote for me. All right, now here's what we need to do. Okay, we need to, we set up the record set, which basically is set up to be filtered to greet the person they log in. So here's how it works. Once you set up your database connection, you don't have to touch that again. So building your application, you're going to pretty much work with between these two tabs. And here's how it thinks. Record sets basically create bindings. Let me repeat that. Record sets create bindings. Now, for whatever reason, if you can't see your bindings, what you would do, come up here to the right and just click the little refresh button. And that's going to refresh the record set that we just created. So record set server behavior. So server behaviors create record sets. Record sets create bindings. Bindings populate the page with content. It's really that thinking. It's really that simple. So watch this. I'm going to click down on here and there's the different field names that we created inside of our database. They're right there. Any one of these field names can be used to populate this page dynamically from the database. And I did make a long speech about if you want to see information on your database, it has to come from a record set, set of records, record set, set of records. So when you're trying to sleep at two o'clock in the morning, I want you to hear my voice. Record set, set of records, record set, server behaviors, server behaviors create record sets, record sets create bindings, bindings populate the page, et cetera, et cetera. It's that type of logical deductive thinking. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to generically type in the word welcome to our website admin section. Spelling admin could could help, so perhaps I should should have taken that free spelling typing class on Udemy.com. All right, now if you want to make this header one, header two, et cetera, et cetera, we can do that. We're not going to stylize this. I'm just going to keep this at header two. Very simple. Now, if I publish this, well, that's not going to greet the person. How would it, how would it know to greet the person? Well, first of all, it wouldn't because I'm missing a key point here. So welcome who? Well, welcome first name. So I'm going to take this. Now, if, if for those of you that have used Microsoft Word mail merge, it's really the same kind of thinking. So welcome space, person's name, comma, space. So welcome to our admin section. Now, some of you that are new to this might think, oh, really, That's it's that easy? Well, it is that easy for this particular part. Okay, but if I publish this page right now, it's not going to welcome anybody. So as an example, I'm going to go to the file menu. I'm going to go to preview and browser and I'm going to go to Firefox and it's going to say testing server. Yes. Dependent files. Well, we do want to say dependent files in this particular case, even though it's going to have no bearing on the site right now. So we want to say dependent files. Yes, because it means the MySQL connection. Now, if you say dependent files, no, I'm going to intentionally make a mistake. Watch what happens. It's going to say <clears throat> big old fat error message because we forgot it's looking for this file name. So we forgot to upload that. So you definitely don't want to make that mistake and you want to include dependent files. So let's go back and do that. So back inside of Dreamweaver. Now, very important step here. Okay, I already have published the page. I went to File, Preview and Browser. Now I have a problem with this word from Adobe because preview means it's not the real one. Well, it really does publish it to the browser window. But here's what I want to be able to do. Okay, I simply want to upload the page. So I don't need to republish a browser window, I already have a browser window. So based on these choices, we're simply going to say put, put on, get off, put on, get off, put, command shift U for upload Macintosh, control shift U for Windows. Then it's going to say, do you want any dependent files? In this particular case, we are going to say yes. Now, once that dependent file is up there, whether it's an image or a CSS file, or in this particular case, a MySQL connections file, you don't have to keep saying dependent files yes, as long as you didn't make changes to that image or a CSS or a picture file. I just want to be very clear about that. So I'm going to say yes. Now, a little trick here, Macintosh at Windows, now depending on the operating system and the version of Windows, you're going to control tab. Macintosh, command tab, I go right back to my browser window. Command tab, I can toggle between my two applications. This is a great technique, especially if you're on a laptop and you don't want to have to scroll to the application every 10 seconds. So now I can simply refresh the page, which now I'm not going to get an error message. But unfortunately, it's not going to greet the person. How could it? Because how does it know? Because what we need to do 
is basically pass or protect this page. So therefore it goes to the login page, the person logs in, then it greets the user. I'm gonna repeat that. Our next video, we're gonna pass or protect the admin page to force it go back to the login page. The login page is then in turn going to go to the index page as long, of course, as long as, as the username and password are correct, by the way. If it's not correct, they're not logging into the page because the page is going to be password protected. So in our next video, I will share with you my simple, simple techniques for password protecting the page. Now, I'm not talking about password protecting the folder or directory. That's to HT access. That's not what this video is about. This is password protecting the PHP page. And we'll do that next. So thank you very much for being here. My name is Robert Farrell.